So let, let's get started, Janet, because I know you're, you're a busy lady. Um, so can you tell the people watching uh, what you do for a business? Okay, so Positive Change Coach. Um, I've been working in this area for about 15 years now. Um, for myself, it started when I joined a yoga class 23 years ago and never knowing that, you know, the life change that was to come. Um, and bit by bit, I got more interested as things came along and helped me then the teacher in me we needed to teach other people as well um so i had a number of things that i was doing and it was you know lockdown has changed a lot of things so one of them mm. for me who's a quite a technophobe was right i've got to learn to do it all online so now i teach yoga and um work with my clients all over the world i mean it's gone global yesterday i was working with a lady in costa rica last week new zealand it's just wonderful wow so Amazing. Yeah, you have to get used to the time differences. Bless her, the lady yesterday was it was four o'clock in the morning. That's commitment. <laughs> that is commitment. Four in the morning. My God, yeah. you you've got you've got power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but it, it was really I wanted to bring it all together so that people got the yoga. Got one of the things I do quite dominantly is something called emotional freedom technique. So sometimes referred to as yes, tapping, yes. where you tap yes. round. Think yes. acupuncture, yes. but without the needles, we tap instead. Because I benefited so much from it, I became passionate about it and worked my way up. And I've been for a number of years now, a national, tra well, international trainer now. Um, so, because I mean, I've got a course running at the moment. So uh, yeah, I have them in America and all over the place. Um, and I was trained as a life coach and say yoga, meditation um neurolinguistic programming so i've packaged it all together so everybody gets yeah. the whole lot and that's yeah. the 60 day positive change program so it's bringing all my skills to the benefit of everybody i work with and it, it's oh, fantastic changes because change either you know we were forced into lockdown we were forced into making changes but there's also the changes that you choose to make but that doesn't come without its stresses you know, even things that are positive, if you look at the stress list, marriage and having babies is up there, even though there's, a, you know, things we want. So and then there's the, the bit inside that wants change, doesn't know what it is you want, but things have got to change. You'll hear people say that. Yeah, and yeah. what I start with, with everybody is going within, because often the change is about within yourself. It's not about the outside things. And as somebody who changed jobs a lot, <laughs> because I was always getting away from and not looking where I was going. So towards an baby call that in NLP terms. Um, yeah. Then it was just not realizing that it was me that needed to change how I approach things. So it, it's all about when change happens, how do you approach it? Because the same event can happen as it has done in this case across the world. And yet how we've reacted to it has been completely different. You know, there's yeah. the people yeah. who, I mean, like, teaching my yoga classes I woke up when we first went into lockdown Saturday morning and thought okay all my income streams have just gone that's it and just in shock I was just like what happens now and yeah. the yoga I teach is called Drew Yoga D-R-U which in Sanskrit means still point and they are an incredibly supportive school of yoga they're based in Snowdonia and we got an email that morning saying right masterclass Monday night this is how to get yourself online and I'm there and within 10 days. Mm. I'm online. But there mm. was a lot of the other teachers who went, oh, I'll wait till September. It kind of went under the duvet. Well, of course, September came and went and we were still in the same mess. So, yeah, of course. It, you know, partly, yes, I had to earn a living, but it, it was the, there was two things in my mind. It was like, yes, I've got to earn a living, but what do I do with all this time? Because I live alone and I don't have any family. So it was like, I can't just do nothing. You know, I'm not a do nothing person. I'm a, okay, let's take the challenge. Let's find out. Um, and then came the YouTube channel and, and all things I would never have dreamed of. Uh, and I just love it because it's expanded my world physically and, and you know, mentally. So yeah. it's, it's down to how you deal with it. And that's what I help yeah. people with is to see things perhaps in a light that they hadn't considered before. Um, yes. You know, I was working with a lady earlier this week and very sadly, and I do get a lot of cases like this, had suffered childhood abuse at a very young age. But of course, she's feeling the shame and it's not her shame. And her logical mind knows that. She knows she was a child. There's nothing she can do about it. But your feelings are something else. 
And that's why emotional freedom. And once we were able to do that, then she was able to see that, no, that it, she knew it, but she also felt it. It was no longer her shame. And therefore she was free of something she'd carried for 40 years. So it's very very powerful. Um, I mean, I work with a, a, a number of people and a lot of the time it, 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 it's that. Mm, it's, it, it's, it's not it's not the technology it ain't the understanding yeah it's that which stops them doing yeah um you know and, yeah and it's wow. emotional and really, rather than mental sometimes it is how yes. we feel yeah. Uh, yeah. we call it somatic uh theory that the body and the mind and the emotions are all linked we're not a body here emotions here and a mind here yes we all come yes. together and, and yeah. logic can come in quite quickly but the emotions they struggle and it, it's how you you know people stay in relationships in jobs and stuck because they're not moving forward because they're still yeah. quite often the little boy or the little girl is, is dominant so we have to heal the child within and then yeah. we can move forwards so what yeah. was the um can you can you remember the point where this went from um being something you were doing for yourself to saying right this is going to be i'm going to do this as a business can you remember that specific point yeah there were, were probably two in a way in that um when i got involved in emotional freedom technique because my background is education i've been a teacher for years and years and worked you know i was head of department and so on um so there's always a passion if i've got it i've just got to share it i want so that it, it came very naturally that i'm going to be a trainer but what was interesting i say i started yoga 23 years ago never did i see myself as a yoga teacher and for me that was the not good enough um and at the time i worked for um the education department in lancashire and it was my colleague who i shared an office with and i'd go to yoga class the night before and i'd come in and she'd go and I'd tell her all about it. And she was like, would you just go and teach it? You are a teacher. It's the most natural thing. And I went, oh, <laughs> I'm good enough, you know. And then somebody had given me a leaflet. So it happens often. And there was this Drew Yoga. I'd never heard of it. But it was a half day on a Saturday. And I thought, great, that's a great way for me to spend a Saturday. And it was local. And the first teacher I'd ever had was a lady called Linda, who was small, blonde and bubbly. And I moved house and I always kept in touch with her, but all the classes I went to were never Linda. And I used to say, I'll never find another Linda. And the day before I went on this half day, it was a moment of like, hang on a minute, if I keep saying that, I won't. I am going to find another Linda. And I walked in and there's this woman, small, blonde and bubbly, and I thought, there she is. (laughs) (laughs) And it's because it's law of attraction. What you think is what you'll get intention Um, attraction yes yes that's what it is because every time i thought i need this next and it would pop and she very much did it the way linda had done it i I felt just felt i'd come home and i wasn't happy in my job and the day before i'd had a particularly bad day with my boss and i'd said right six months time i'm 50 i'm out of here don't know how don't know why i'm just out of here and I went to that class and she taught it and I loved it. And then at the break, she said, by the way, we're starting our first teacher training program in Manchester, which is my hometown in November, which is my 50th birthday. And I thought that is it. And mm. I signed up there and then handed over a few thousand pounds. And that was it. That was decision Isn't made. Strange. Then, yeah. Isn't it strange to have a universe kind oh, of yeah brings things for you and, and i think that's the problem for a lot of people there because they're not aware they're mm. awake they're, they're, in, they're, in, they're, in the, they're in the zone yeah. the trenches if you like they're not spotting all these different opportunities because i remember a friend of mine saying to me once that what you ask for what you speak out loud will become true yes but if you think about you know if you think of the person who's always negative or mm. i'm not this one i'm not that generally they always get negative things happen to them exactly. they draw it in but then on the other hand, when you've got someone who said, oh, I'm going to achieve, I'm going to do, I'm going to. It's amazing that you then see a year two, it's like, Daniel, you're doing that thing you said you're going to do. Yeah. yeah. Words and power. Uh, yeah. Words and power. Fantastic. Yeah. It, it's just the energy you send out is, you know, that you're welcome. I mean, I have a, a saying, you know, 
never miss an opportunity. Welcome the mm. opportunities in. And I do. Yes. And and I mean, a few years ago, well, gosh, 10 years ago now, I decided to emigrate to, a, I won't say which country, but a hot country, um, ooh, and open ooh. a yoga retreat because my very original background was hotel management. And oh. I'd started to go on, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I've lived a long time. <laughs> Um, and I hate, yeah, now and again, so say, what did you do before this? And I think, oh, God, <laughs> that's a long list. Um, and I was going on yoga retreats and yes, they were good yoga teachers, but the, the looking after hotel hospitality bit was missing. So I thought yes. I can do that. Um, and it was when my mum died that I thought, well, there is nothing to hold me back. She left me the house. I sold my own house and off I went. Um, and so many people have said to me, that was brave. And I went, no, it wasn't. It was exciting. It was embracing something. Of course, of course. Two years later, when it had all gone belly up and I came back homeless, penniless, jobless and in my mid fifties, that was brave coming back and starting again, but not going out there. That was never brave. That was exciting. And I just Whoa. got, unfortunately, Whoa. caught out by the local council and the property I bought, which I still own, but can't do anything with. And oh, too long no. a story. <laughs> yeah. But I've rebuilt my I mean, one, I mean, one, I mean, my next question was actually going to be, have there been any challenges with the business? Well, I think you've already answered that one, haven't you? I mean, um, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and, and it, it is... It can be difficult, um, you know. I know of several people who try to make it make it abroad, and um, you know, bad luck means they've chosen the wrong lawyer, or you know, someone who's who's not really in it for them has made a decision for them. Which is, I mean, it's such a it's such a minefield. Um, yes. Well, hey, you're back. You came oh, back, yeah. like I said, yeah. you're brave. You came back. Well, I'm back now. I'm gonna get started. And I mean, how long did it kind of take for you once you got back to the, the UK to kind of get back into the swing of things and feel like things were going back um, in the way you wanted? A few to months go? initially to get back because when I look back, I recognise I had a breakdown. And you know, at the yeah. time you, you're going through it, so you're not aware. Yeah. And that's yeah. when you find out who your friends are, the ones that got <laughs> that and have stuck yeah. with me throughout. And I am very, very yeah. lucky to have them. And the ones who yeah. fell by the wayside because oh, I can't deal with that. They're, they're with yeah. Fine weather friends, if you like. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, you know, always it was somebody, can you do this for us? Can you do that? And you start to build. Um, my main aim was to buy my own house again because I was living in rented and I'd never done it before and I really didn't like it. Yeah. And equally, when I'd, I tried at first to fight for council where abroad to try and get things sorted, but you cannot fight City Hall. And they were no, so corrupt. No. And yeah. I came to the conclusion, I thought, the way I win is to rebuild my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it was, well, I bought this house just over three years ago. So it probably took me about six years to get to the point where I could buy a house again. So, yeah. you know, that was like, yeah, I've done it. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's the thing, having that goal that you set yourself and then achieve it, it's like, no one can take that away from you, can they? It's like, I've done this myself, no help. Yeah. Off the, off the actions I've taken, the positive actions and the way that mentally you're set up, it tells me that it probably ain't much that phases you now. It's like, <laughs> manana, manana, bring it on. Is that all you've got? <laughs> no, I like the good stuff as well, please. Because <laughs> then you get to the point and then COVID came along, you know, and we all had to adapt. I suppose life is like that. And I suppose one of the things that you teach people is that every time we feel like the world's against us, that is actually just a moment in time. It ain't our life. Yeah. And, and the reality is when you sit and think about, well, how many other moments in times have I had? You've had loads. And guess what? Yeah. You're still here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you know, you didn't lose your hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. My father was bald from his 20s, so. <laughs> Apparently bald men are more beautiful, so I've been told. But anyway, another story for another day. Yeah, he, <laughs> was, he, was, he should have been, my mother used to say that, should, if your father had been alive now, he'd have been really fashionable. <laughs> Exactly. I can run faster. I'm aerodynamic. Anyway, um, <laughs> Good point. Um, my favourite, my, my favourite question actually. Uh, tell us one thing about you, Janet, that not many people know about. Boop, boop, boop. Oh my gosh, not many people know about. Um, mm -hmm. Let me think, because I, I do tend to be quite open, so people know I came oh. from a boring dancing background and that I've done all those uh, no, things. Stop, 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 stop dancing. Expand, please. <laughs> right, I'll show you something. <laughs> Woo! She's gonna dance, guys. She's gonna dance. No, I'm not. <laughs> Too oh. small a room. 
<laughs> that is my father's certificate when he became a ballroom dancing teacher in 1947. And you know all the fuss and particularly come dancing at the moment, because obviously I watch that. Um, and the young lady who's deaf, my father was deaf and he was ballroom dancing teacher. So he was ahead of his time. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, even that, you know, that time, that period of time where they were not as accommodating, shall mm -hmm. we say, um, as they are now, and, and to be able to kind of make that, I mean, you must be so proud of, of what he did and what he oh, had to yeah. fight against. I mean, it, it was, you know, it, it was, it was degenerative. So there was times where, I mean, by the time I was born, because he was 43 when I was born, I mean, my mum used to say she'd be, be sat at the dining table and I'd speak to her and shout at him. I very quickly picked up <laughs> what I had to do, you know, it, it was just, that was the way it was. Um, Isn't that what all teenage girls do? <laughs> five year old <laughs> oh, oh god <laughs> from the moment i could understand and speak i knew to shout at dad you know that that was where i had to do it um just to raise you because he wasn't too keen on he didn't like to admit it you know back then like you were saying he didn't like to admit he was deaf um and so he even with my mum and i because he, he'd say something and he ignored and you knew damn well he hadn't heard you and you'd say you haven't tell me what i've just said and of course he couldn't so that was always because he he didn't want to admit it so yeah that was that's probably the thing people know little about i happened to mention it to a friend the other way which said i never knew that uh, and it's just i got used to it it was only how old would i be probably yeah in the late 40s or so and i was on a because i was policy officer for equality and diversity and yeah. i went on a course about deaf awareness and it yeah. was asked, the lady asked us to introduce herself. There was this moment and I just went, I'm the child of a deaf parent. And I'd never thought of it like that before because it's just been the way I lived. Know. Course, so you, you realise the challenges you had because you just accepted it and you got on with it. I, 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 I really, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of your dad now actually and how brave he was um, and what he would have had to go through internally, not yeah. just... Absolutely. And in them kind days, of... you didn't talk about it. Well, he's a man. He's a ma oh, you're a man. Get on with it. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Old days are gone, man. Um, <laughs> thank God. Um, <laughs> um, so, somebody watching right now, and they're thinking, "I'm going to start my own business." <laughs> um, <laughs> only joking. Um, what three bits of advice would you give them? I think because my first business was a catering business with that hotel background that was when I was in the late 20s um and back then it wasn't the thing to do for a young woman um you know it was <laughs> yeah it wasn't done but you know they, they assumed you worked for somebody and you go no it's my business um so it, it is a bit easier now um but what I come across a lot is people not charging enough not valuing themselves so therefore they, they give it away and you've got to look at the reality of all the things it's cost you to do that one hour of work or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, the, the people who say, oh, just pay me what you like. Well, you, you don't go in a shop and they say, oh, just pay us what you like. Yeah, I've, I've had that. Um, or I was on a network thing the other day and a lady is a um, um, beauty therapist. And she said, this woman, every time she comes, well, I'll pay it you for now this condescending looking down at it, it's just honestly the attitudes out there and that very much people feel like oh well it, it, it's only me it, it's you know it's that only me I'm not good enough so you really do have to put a business head on get advice you know people don't they they're very good at whatever they do but they don't realize they've now got to run a business yeah. particularly in my yeah. area of work with the holistic therapists they yeah really struggle with the idea of charging it should be oh, free oh, oh, yeah yeah no, but even the nhs yeah. isn't free we pay for it yeah and yeah. they've got yeah. to understand that and it, so it's yeah. and buying the things that you can't do so yeah. i was preparing a, a freebie booklet thing i was doing a few months ago i haven't got a clue you know people go oh, canvas really easy and i'm going <laughs> so i paid somebody to do it you know rather than spending Fantastic. hours and hours and getting nowhere absolutely um, so, yeah, so there's, there's some things. Like Woo. Yeah, you've just so, got um, to do that. Yeah, uh, so that's one. Give us another 
just another couple of tips for a um, new business. Well, owner. one is get the professional help. Two it is oh, yeah, two. charge correctly. Yeah, um, yeah. And the third one is boundaries. Um, I hear so many people who are self-employed and are going, oh, yeah, I'm working 11 o'clock at night. I'll speak to anybody. And I go, I won't. If that phone goes beyond six o'clock, maybe up to seven sometimes, I don't answer it. And I don't you reply to emails. Yeah, I have had somebody ring me at half past 11 at night. I was in bed and said, oh, I'm just ringing about the yoga classes. I said, excuse me, I was in bed. Oh, yeah, I meant to ring earlier. No apology. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. And they Wait, ring. I'm, I'm assuming. I'm, I'm assuming she was in a country which was nine hours ahead of us. No, no. <laughs> that was very. That was a number of years ago. So and I, I get people <laughs> ring me Sunday morning, Sunday night, Saturday afternoon. I, I was out shopping with a friend one Saturday afternoon, and the phone rang. Nobody I knew just had picked up the phone. Oh, can I have a Reiki treatment this afternoon? I said, Well, I'm sorry, I don't work Saturday afternoons. I'm actually out with a friend. Well, can you do it later? <laughs> no, it's I don't so work Saturday, right and she just put the phone down. Not an apology, not a do you mind. It's so people will do that. It's up to you to put the boundary. You know, I could have said, "All oh, right, well, I can do it at five o'clock if I rush back." No, I just don't do it. You've got it, so it, it gives a wrong impression of you yeah. that you're kind of desperate to get this this working, yeah. and and I, and I think that's a great bit of advice. Um, because people will run you off your feet if you let yes. them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, this person's got all the time in the world. I'll have some of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, before we go to the, the last bit, um, you, you are a freebie, aren't you? A bonus for anybody who's watching or watches on replay. Do you want to tell us what that freebie is, that bonus? Yeah, um, offering a half hour, what I call a discovery session. It's about, you know, where you're at. Um, I do use a standard assessment tool so that people can see, you know, it, it, people don't go, oh, I didn't realise I felt like that, you know, so it because you're so busy getting on with day to day life, you don't sit back and think. Um, so it's to give them an idea of where they're at, what kind of help we can work with together. And just it's discovery. It's where am I at? What can I do about it? And where do I want to go? So, Fantastic. you know, free half hour on Zoom. So anywhere in the world. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And uh, Dan, if you could do me a favour um, when we finish, you didn't go back to this video and you can drop all of your links in or, or so that people can find you on the other platforms that you want that'd be absolutely fantastic well what i'm going to do so we can have a quick a quick debrief after i'm going to, I'm going to join again so there's going, to, there's going to be another window um and then we can do a quick, quick debrief there but uh, the technical gremlins were, were held at bay and we were able to do it so so uh, guys thank you so much for watching alison cotton thank you for joining us uh, alison just wanted to say that she totally agrees with worth and the discounted price is the new price it becomes the new price which absolutely makes sense to me so thank you for that Alison um shall we have some kind of buzzword for your for your for your free session what, what word can we have what, what have they got to hashtag and say um just change or positive change. hashtag change guys that's the one so if you've got to the end because we haven't mentioned it until now if you put hashtag change then you can win yourself a, a wonderful a discovery session with Janet where she will go through things with you and, and and help you put together some kind of plan to move forward but um, that's absolutely fantastic so uh, i'm going to end the stream now